Good evening, everyone. Good good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the PMBC meeting, uh, January twenty fifth, nineteen uh, <laughs> twenty twenty three. Um, I'm going to put up the uh, if I can do it the agenda for this evening. Here we go. Um, the first item on the agenda is to approve the warrant, uh, which we have only one item, and that is uh, a latent um, invoice that uh, came in from Johnson and Roberts for the final uh, PV study on the library, and it's for $2,929.60. Uh, any uh, discussion on that? Is Brian Fors looked over this, Steve? Yeah, Brian's here. Yeah, uh, we're not we're not done paying them either. This is a small uh, chunk uh, associated with the uh, lead study. Um, oh, they have a pretty br uh, detailed breakdown on their invoice about what's left to be paid. We are holding uh, to date. Thank you, Steve. Um, roughly roughly half of what they owe for uh, the, the PV array, as it is not fully functioning yet. They still have some work and, and checkout to be done. Um, and then they're not fully done on their lead submission as that, that solar system's um, directly tied to that. So uh, we recommended this invoice, um, but we won't be probably recommending anything more until we're done and operating. All right, I make a motion that we accept the um, warrant but 29, 29, 60, 60. Is there a second? I'll second it. Bartlett seconds all in favor. Bob? Bob Rama, yes. Bartlett? Bartlett, yes. Stacy. Stacy Scott, yes. Do we have anyone else on? I guess not. <clears throat> okay. Um, oh, and Steve Moore, yes. So the motion passes. Um, let me pull up the... Uh, Agenda again. Uh, next item is to approve the minutes from January 11th. Um, I reviewed them. I didn't have any comments. Uh, did anyone else have anything to add? No. Nope. I'm all set with them, Steve. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Uh, second. And second. Second. Okay. Uh, okay. All in favor, Bob? Bob Rumble, yes. Uh, Stacy? Stacy Scott, yes. Bartlett? Bartlett Harvey, yes. And um, who else do we have here? Okay. Yourself? No, you. Yeah, Steve Moore, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Shaker Lane Feasibility Study. Um, haven't heard much on this of late. Steve was supposed to set up, Steve Mark was supposed to set up a, a meeting. Stacy, have you heard anything? No, we haven't gotten, um, I think it was in February that we were going to be trying to get together, the second round of trying to get together, but I haven't had anything confirmed yet. Um, okay. Yeah. So more to come on that. Uh, library update, Brian? Yeah, I, I wish I had better news. The never-ending project for the solar uh, is continuing at this point. We thought that we were going to have installation pat the past weekend uh, due to weather, uh, scheduling from the contractor, and then understanding that they were going to need, maybe there was a little misunderstanding with their scope, but they have an interconnection breaker that needs to be installed, and therefore the power to the building needs to be shut off. So that adds a little wrinkle that we need to schedule that with the operations of the library. So um, the hope is that we can schedule in the next few days, the full installation, the installation of the breaker, uh, the commissioning agent I have, um, I've had communicated with, they will be on site immediately after, the engineer of record will be on site immediately after. Uh, we'll get this thing punched out uh, for a punch list and, um, and then the lead would be submitted after that. But Unfortunately, I thought we were going to have that installed. Um, they're in the contractor's possession, and it's a matter of dragging them up here uh, to getting them in. So um, I'm working with Sam to see if we have to do the, the power outage after hours when there's no meetings going on. Um, but that, that's ongoing. The hope is that we get that done in the next few days. 
Right. So, is no. it the light department that's got to kill the power or is it going to be? No, uh, the, the, the licensed electrician can do it from inside the building um, and, and then they can install their breaker uh, in, inside there. Um, the other update that I did have is the electrician that the town uh, is in contract with regarding the EV station. Reached out to him several times. He is hopeful that the parts that he's missing, the breaker, I'm not sorry, the breaker, the meter. Uh, and the other infrastructure inside the meter socket uh, can be installed in the near future as well. Uh, and then that EV charger will be snapped on uh, and functioning at that point. So I will forward any correspondence I get from Randy O'Grady. And I will also um, keep everybody in the loop from KRN contractors, which is the solar, um, about their status and about when they'll be on site. Great. Okay. Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. Any other questions for Brian? Okay, on to the Littleton High School roof update. Um, <clears throat> Brian is uh, at a at a wake tonight, so he's not able to join us. Um, uh, the project had to be put out for a rebid because um, of a technical diff, you know, issue, and uh, I guess we should expect to have. Uh, those uh, bids come back uh, very shortly. Uh, senior center update, Brian. Yeah, and I can I can sympathize with the technical error on going out to bid. That's uh, quite the step back, and it happened up the street in Pepperell where we put out our entire RF uh, queue for for qualifications, and we did not receive a single elevator contractor interested in the job. So we have to start over from scratch when it comes to the elevator scope and put that back out to bid. But wow. Just an aside there. Um, so with yeah. the senior center right now, uh, we've been working hard with town organizations, the designer, and now with Commodore Builders. Um, we've had a reconciliation with the estimate that we had at the end of design development. Right. We're, we're pretty far past it, um, but we're understanding that we're over budget with what these numbers were coming in from based upon where we were at schematic design. Um, we've gone through one exercise of cutting some of the low hanging fruit and I wanted to bring to the committee tonight um, and, and kind of ask some questions about how we're going to handle this. In the next few weeks, we're identifying things that can be uh, valued out of the project or changed in the project to help um, recover some of the, the overruns that we're seeing uh, from our previous estimate. But I guess my question is without waiting to the next PMBC meeting, and I'm gonna show you, uh, if, if I'm able to share my screen, I'm, I'm gonna show some of the exercises that we're going through is are you looking for me to present um, value engineered ideas to be approved by the by the committee or should there be a rep that's coming to these working group meetings that can kind of represent the committee about them some of which I, I in my opinion I don't think needs the the committee's approval as it's um, either common sense or it's a change of material um, but there, there may be some changes <laughs> to the design that's going to force some sort of an approval or it's going to hit a level where I'm going to be I'm not going to be comfortable unless we get OK from from our end user in the town uh, to making some of those changes. Um, what I'll, yeah, what Bri I'll do Brian, is Brian, Brian, yeah. I would I would suggest that, you know, um, you guys make a recommendation yep. and present it uh, to the PMBC and we would ask uh you know say mark rombacher and liz right. and and the committee to take a look at it because you know it's you know as you say the end users um you know at at their discretion correct so yep. what we have what we have here and, and before the pmbc was charged with the project we were kind of taking orders from uh, sometimes from the select board sometimes from the town administrator sometimes from the director of the of the senior center um, and some decisions were made specifically with making the building an all electric building. Uh, they wanted to explore uh, a solar system on top of this building. Um, <clears throat> they wanted to um, continue a sidewalk down the driveway. A, a lot of these things are, are we're going we're gonna to get to a point where we're going to need to know whether or not we're going one direction or the other. Um, we're, we're working well with Little, Littleton Light, and I, I think this is another, I, I want to bring up this 
uh, this scenario to the committee is just so that everyone's informed about where we are right now uh, as it comes to power. Um, there's two different scenarios on how we can bring power into this building. We can bring primaries in from Shattuck Street as it, the, similar to what we did for the library. We brought the library down the driveway to a transformer that's next to the building. And then the secondaries run into the building from that transformer location. We could do the same as that, come off of Shattuck Street, probably on the opposite side of the property near the neighbor's house and put a transformer there. And then the secondaries would then run into the electric room. In my opinion, that would be the uh, least um, costly and, <laughs> and um, would, would probably expedite um, construction. The other idea that Littleton Light had was to reuse the same location of the transformer for the library and use a larger transformer that they have in stock. The problem with that is that we would have to shut the power off to the library while that installation was going. And then we would also need to dig an extensive amount of secondaries from that, second, from that transformer location back up the hill around the building because you can't run it through the building uh, to where our electric room is right now. It's roughly about 1,200 feet of, of secondaries. Um, mm. the, the issue that I see with that is not only the shutoff of the library in coordination there, but we have several utilities down in that driveway that are going to need to be carefully excavated around, including we have a gas line that comes down the driveway. We have our primary duct bank that came from the library, which is encased in concrete. We have the sewer system, um, which may be at different elevations, but I think it all needs to be accounted for. Uh, and we also have drain, uh, drainage infiltration systems that are underneath the subsurface of that driveway. Yeah, so, the, sewer, the sewer system is really deep there, so that's not yeah. an issue. But I, I agree, coming in with a, um, <clears throat> with a dedicated primary makes much sense. Right. So yeah. the... And I thank you for agreeing. The The issue or the, the rub here is that in talking with Littleton Light, they do not have any of those of the smaller transformers that we would need in stock now. They would need to order one. And their fear or their, their concern is that an ordering a transformer could take years until it's on site. And so we've consulted with the engineer of record who is more confident that we would receive a transformer in time for turnover of this building. Um, but I wanted to bring it up to you and I don't think a decision needs to be made now. I think uh, more information needs to be provided to the committee where it comes to actual price for each scenario. But I think there's going to be a need to make a decision to, I, I don't want to use the term roll the dice, but I think if we if we want to go the cheaper route, we need to probably place an order on a transformer as soon as possible and hope that the lead time is improved upon throughout construction so that when we're ready for final commissioning and elevator testing, we have final power into the building. It's, it's my opinion that if we're going to be um, reusing the transformer location at the library, we could be spending hundreds of thousands of dollars more to for excavation and relocation of that of that um electrical run so Brian, then, what, what, to, what would that, you do good what would you do is run a new duck bank um from that pole over in the corner there and run your cable and everything else through that system right there correct so there's some risers that we used from the from mm. for the library it's the second pole down shattuck street but that pole might be fully might be full right now with the amount of risers that they have. So we would use probably the pole on the corner pulling into the driveway. We'd be able to use that. We would run a primary line probably across the property, a couple hundred, maybe a hundred or so feet and place a, a transformer there. We'd then go through all the requirements that Littleton Light would have in order for them to access it. Or we could put the transformer right there at the corner, provide protection, and then give it to the landscape architects to kind of dress it up a little bit so that it's not an eye catcher from the front of the building as you drive by it. Yeah, I, I'm not a I'm I'm not a fan of uh, 
putting the primary, you know, too far from the building. 100%. You know, you, 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 know, you have to upsize your uh, secondaries to voltage drop. Correct. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Um, not that it's a big concern uh, in Littleton, but the engineer did say with a, a and I could be getting my terms wrong, but with a run that long from the library to where the electrical closet would be at the senior center, there would be um, some handholes or, or manholes that would need to be installed and therefore would allow for any type of uh, power poaching, if, if you put it that way, in order to, to kind of siphon power off if someone knew what they were doing correctly. I think that was more of a an urban setting that he had seen problems with but just letting you know that that type of uh yeah that, that, there. yeah that that's that doesn't make any sense in this <laughs> yeah. situation yeah. no exactly so I, I that all aside i just think that we have two options here i think we will need to be proactive if we make one once we get the information that we have on what this um savings could be um and if we're good with that, I hope to have a lot of more info at next meeting and we would be able to release Littleton Light on the ordering and procuring of that transformer uh, and get us in the queue for, for, for whenever it's it's ready. Yeah, you know, the, the, these electrical utilities have uh, agreements, you know, with each other. And if uh, they had one on order that was, you know, six months out, and uh, somebody else had one in stock. I'm sure there could be some kind of arrangement made. Fingers crossed. And, and I, I know that that was our first meeting with Littleton Light. Um, I don't want to uh, make any promises with them, but obviously if we, you know, as construction would progress, I'd be checking in and bringing them coffee all the time, asking how things are. So um, don't, don't forget the donuts. Yeah, and the donuts. Correct. <laughs> correct. So I'd what, rather see option two. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're seeing here is the original estimate that Commodore had put together at the very beginning uh, that they, they gave us right around Christmas time. And if I can, uh, let me see if I can change. Can you see the new tab? It's a list. Yeah. Okay. So what they've done, <clears throat> what we're starting with is um, putting together items that um, are potential savings on the building. Uh, before, it be so for one example, I will just put here. Number one was eliminating the generator. <clears throat> before this came into the PMBC um, between uh, Mark Rambacher and Anthony, they decided that a generator was not going to be necessary for this building. It was not going to be used as a warming or cooling center, uh, and therefore wouldn't be needed. So um, we use this as an example, as kind of a vehicle on how we would use this this um, uh, this software. And so eliminating the generator was an immediate uh, almost three hundred thousand um, dollar deduct off of the off of the construction cost. So Commodore is now put together and LLB has put together a list of items. A lot of them were low hanging fruit. A lot of them were, are going to be um, items that are going to need a, dis a decision on. Uh, and ultimately, the hope is that. We bundle up a bunch of decisions. Uh, my, my, my requirement is going to be to have someone from Commodore and from LLB uh, attend the PMBC meeting, if that's okay with you guys, as kind of a, a project presentation. And, and we can make some decisions on, on moving forward about where we are. Um, in parallel with all of this, I'm working with the town accountant and the finance director about what has been appropriated to date, what has been committed to date, because I know there were some expectations about what was going to be spent on construction and the construction numbers we're seeing are, are significantly higher than what the first numbers were that were being talked about a year ago. And while we may be able to get under our number that's been appropriated with value engineering, it's still gonna be higher than what they originally anticipated. I just wanna set everybody's expectations before we move on to finalizing the documents, going out to bid, and, and start assembling a, a, a guaranteed maximum price. Brian, do we get rid of that stone um, along the, the front of the building? Uh, some, yes. And then an, another item I can put, uh, I'll show you right here, Bob, if I, um, 
So number 15 right here is the anchored stone masonry at the north elevation. This is, uh, this is the elevation that actually faces the neighbor's property. Uh, and there's a decorative stone that ultimately, if, if you look at the grade from Shattuck Street and you draw a straight line across and then the foundation kind of drops off from there, this would be kind of a decorative stone that goes on there. It was also an item we valued out of the library. If you go down towards the fire road and look back up at the building, there's a lot of exposed foundation there that once used to be a decorative stone that we decided we don't, we, we can't afford this at this point. We, that was, we sacrificed that for something else. Yeah, I'd rather see him go with the, um, the hardy board all the way down and, you know, maybe use a, what looks like a stone foundation yep. um, than having to, uh, to run that stone all the way up the side of the building. Yeah. There's definitely some, some much cheaper options. Sometimes you can use a, um, a textured form, that kind of looks like a, a stone look on the outside of a foundation once they get yeah. formed off. So, you know, we're just starting. This is our first meeting was um, just before eight o'clock this morning. And, you know, there's, there's definitely a lot of work to do. Commodore is kind of working their way up to where LLB is currently in their design. Um, and, and that's, that's kind of where we're at right now. The, the, the big player is going to be me finding the fully appropriated money, um, what, what's in every bucket, understanding where we are. I've started to assemble a total project budget and I wanna be able to give you guys a draft at probably the next meeting about where we are right now and getting the okays from you about how it's looking or if you wanna see more reduction that might actually add a little bit more length to the schedule, but if it makes you feel more comfortable about where we are in our budget, then that's what we will do. How much do we have in uh, contingency? Oh, that's a different thing. Uh, so there's two different contingencies that are in our estimate right now. There's a design contingency and a construction mm -hmm. contingency. Yeah. Um, and I'll take that back. There's three contingencies. And then there's a, a CM contingency, which is held underneath Commodore's guar uh, guaranteed maximum price. Yeah. The design contingency is there to account for anything that hasn't been designed yet. And I believe we were upwards of um, six, seven, at 700,000 to a million dollars is being held right now in design contingency. We also hold about 3%, uh, 4% for CM contingency. And the same would go for the, the owner's contingency on top of that. So um, with the job this size, we're looking at roughly around that $700,000 each on either side of the table that we'd be holding for, um, for, for each party during, during construction. Obviously the, the route that we're going with, with the CM at risk, that contingency is something that Commodore manages, but I approve and, and, and see what they use for on, on every bit of that. If it's something that's valid, uh, we, we recommend approving it. If it's something outside of their scope, obviously it would come out of our contingency. Um, but one thing we do manage is making sure that they're not using contingency funds for something that's that's already part of their scope. Because at the end of the job, if there's any money left over, that comes back to the town. Right. <coughs> okay. Well, that's a that's a great update. Um, and Steve, if I could possibly, yes. Yeah. Um, quick question for you, Brian. Um, value engineering is great. Um, and one of the questions I was actually going to pose was where were we with regards to the design specs? But given, given everything else that's going on here, um, I, I'm certain that some of the AV stuff falls down below. But more importantly is if I look at number 12, um, there's the leading of that folding partition in the multipurpose room. So yep. Some of those um, interdependencies are what we had planned on for, you know, either petitioning off areas for microphones or for cameras. And if things are being retasked as a result of that value engineering, you know, it would be good to understand that. Um, not saying that we're critical high importance that routine, because who knows? They might just say, "Yeah, we don't need the AV stuff in in the, the building," and that's yep. a possibility. Yep. A hundred percent. I, I think if, uh, if you see that number 12, the assignee, Scott Guerin, he's the estimator from Commodore. And, uh -huh. um, 
Uh, I actually saw that around the first thing this morning, and I said, you know, you'd be you'd be surprised how well attended the conference rooms are in the library um, and how hard it is to get a reservation sometimes. And so I, I told them that this one with the partition is probably, you know, a, 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 a more of a need than a want. Um, but anything that's going to affect anything with the infrastructure, obviously we would do another round with all of the vendors and all of the town, the municipal uh, committees on what, what's going in there. But if anything, anything like that would affect the multi-purpose room or AV, we would uh, make sure you're included. Right, right. And that's, that's so, you know, you've answered a, a bunch of questions here. I just wanted to make certain that, you know, we hadn't missed the boat for a lot of details. And it sounds like the value engineering is actually allowing for that close microscopic view of, do we really want it? Do we really need it? Yep. And what's the impact? So I exactly. thank you very much for that. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for Brian? Yeah, I, I was just, this is maybe off the wall question, but I was wondering if, if the electrical closet could be moved in the building or is, or is the building frozen that we can't change anything? Great question. So we've got uh, two locations for the electrical closet is, we'll call it the back corner uh, closest to the neighbor and then yeah. the back corner that's closest to the driveway. Um, the issue with bringing that closer to say the library is because that part of the floor is going to be ground level. And those are where some of the, um, according to the architect, where the high visibility offices are going to be, where the director's going to sit, where the lobby's going to be, and where a lot of kind of the, the, the showcase of the building is going to be out front at that driveway. And so all of your mechanical spaces and all of where your electrical and, and maintenance stuff is catered towards okay. the back of that mm -hmm. building on the first floor where it's going to, there's going to be no windows. It's actually built into the hill. Um, okay. So in, in order to get to that, in order to follow code, you'd have to follow up the driveway and then dive into the building that way up the driveway. So instead okay. of going through the foundation. So that, that was the explanation I got. I, I brought up the same thing, Bartlett. I was like, yeah. well, let's just shoot across the driveway and go right into the building there and then we'll put our electrical cabinet. And they said, not so fast. So. Okay. Thanks. Hey, good, good question. And I'm, I'm, I'm wide open for suggestions and, and, uh, and recommendations uh -huh. on what you guys think. So. I'm going to send you guys, you know, some of these. These are just screenshots from today's meeting that I wanted to show. Um, and you guys can take a look at it. And, and ultimately, we, we're starting a recurring meeting every Wednesday morning um, until we get to construction. The, the thought being that on an as-needed basis, uh, Bob, I know you like to join some of those. Maybe we ask for um, the owner to come in at the, at the end. We don't want to bog them down with all of the, the nuts and bolts, but some of the decisions and some of the kind of see where we're heading towards, you know, as we approach another PMBC meeting. The Thursday meetings have been bad for me because well, good. Thursday's golf me day too. down here. <laughs> yeah, good. Thursday stunk for me too. So it's, it's shaping up to be Wednesday mornings that we're, that we're going to meet as a project team. If we need to accommodate the owner some other time, we'll do that too. What time are you doing Wednesday morning, uh, Brian? We did it at eight this morning, but I think, uh, Architects don't like early in the morning, so I think that's it's pickleball be time for me. <laughs> is that true, Barlett? It is absolutely. Yeah. They work late at night. Yeah. <laughs> is, uh, no, just so, keep in touch, Bar Bar Bartlett. Is that something you'd be interested in getting into? Um, attending these meetings. Um, yeah. yeah, it might be. Okay. Sure, I'll, so I'll keep you guys included. Yeah, just just invite, and then you know the team will attend if uh, if available. I guess. Cool. Invite if we can make it. We'll make it. Good. Yeah. The only other thing I had for you, Steve, I know that you had a uh, a concern about um, on these. You know, on a monthly basis, we're going to put together these invoice packets, which is going to kind of condense everything that's done on this job right now. What has been committed? What's been um, contracted to and what's being recommended for payment this month. I did get your note, Steve. I, I agree. If you want me to make sure I'm going to, this will be kind of tied into the conversation I have with uh, Steve Anuti and Alicia Benjamin is 
what has been paid out as a feasibility or a town hall needs assessment. And we're going to yeah. just carve that out because that's not, that has nothing to do with the financing and this project right now. Correct. So yeah. if you can see this, I, I did pull up our, um, this is kind of a vertex budget here. And what that would mean is that this feasibility line and this feasibility line uh, would be omitted from there. But I just want to make sure on the town's books that they're showing the same thing because I don't want, um, we get to the end of the project and there's, you know, what we're showing here is 80 grand is not accounted for, you know, whether they were keeping it in this bucket or not. So well, you, will, uh, you, 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 this, this spreadsheet shows, I think close to a million dollars um, in fee and uh, or a little over a million. Right here. And, yeah. And yep. that obviously has, it's, it's not applicable to the uh, senior center. So the, what this is applicable to is what LLB has a signed contract for and signed amendments for. What they do have a signed amendment for is to get them through construction documents. And they've actually provided a number to get them through construction administration, which was signed just before PMBC. So okay. currently right now- I, th I, thought, I thought this was just your invoice. Oh no. Oh, no, no, no. So um, let me show you. This is a total project budget to date. And this this is strictly what has been committed, what has been spent to date, and what's left. The top portion right here, and, and I apologize. I should have probably done a little walkthrough with what my accounting does. Um, the OPM fees are the first section here. Yeah. $30,000 was our original feasibility. The remaining is our amendment that was to get us through bidding. So that's where we stand right now. This is what we've been, uh, we have signed contracts in place for to get us through bidding up until construction. The next line is the architect and engineers with LLB. This was for their feasibility and town hall needs assessment. And these make up a lot of the amendments that have been signed to date to get them through any additional design services to get them through construction and bidding. Um, we do have the signed amendments in hand and that's why we put them on this sheet. We then put in the uh, some of the other add-ons that LLB has put on their contract for possible um, uh, added services for FF&E procurement, other reimbursables. Obviously, we would review that as well. So this is the total number that I have right now committed to the project. Um, I do not have Commodore on this. You, you, we will put Commodore on this at some point. But we just don't have the the final final signed executed uh, contract from um, Commodore's legal team and and Jenny uh, from Town Council. But th this so, was um, this was part of your invoice, right? Yeah. So uh, what we try to c consider this is is an invoice packet. And so if I'll I'll slowly scroll up here, uh, what you'll see is a is a um, a cover page, which will be addressed to everybody here that uh, we've dealt with with town that deals with the finances. It will be signed by me. And then ultimately it will say Ver Vertex recommends the following invoices. And we'll say, let's, let's go in a time machine to a year from now. There'll be an invoice from Vertex. There'll be an invoice from LLB. There'll be an invoice from Commodore Builders. And there may be several invoices from owner supplied vendors, whether it's uh, the furniture that's being installed or the fiber that's being run from Nancy Glencross's uh, vendor into this with a security vendor. And we'd list that all out as a cover sheet. And then behind that, we will uh, go into uh, detail into each, each invoice. So this is a very simple one. The cover page says it's the Vertex invoice. Uh, the first page is the Vertex invoice with the breakdown of the labor that has been spent during the month. We'd have a outstanding invoice and what our remaining to date and what has been billed to date on this project. And then we would do all of the backup for the subsequent vendors and contractors at that point. And at the very end, we will put a status report together, which will show you any type of transfers or what has been paid to date out of that budget line item uh, that gets done by our accounting sent to me i go through the entire thing we bundle it up together and it gets sent out for you guys to review before this meeting so this this is quite different than what we did in the past uh very and um 
in my opinion, it is more of a lessons learned on my end as I felt as though as we got into deeper into um, construction at the library, we were getting many, many invoices thrown at us throughout the project regarding, well, these are the chairs for the uh, the director's room. These are the kids' toys. This is the, the, the chairs for another area. So, and we were just sending them to either you or Michelle and just said, we recommend. This point, it's gonna be one-stop shop and we'll have it actually entered into our budget sheet and we'll kind of have a firmer grasp on exactly what we have left to spend. Um, and I, I think it will make it easier. We'll try to get it to you guys a week in advance uh, <clears throat> for review. Um, but ultimately that cover sheet is what's gonna give you a, a, a kind of a cheat sheet on what's behind it. Yeah, I, I kind of like this, but um, I need something from Anthony. Um, you know, we we did not negotiate this with you guys, so um, I need something from Anthony um, recommending or uh, saying that you know the town has approved the uh, budget that you you guys are showing here. Oh, sure, and, and I can provide that to. So the only thing that we put in this budget are signed amendments from the town. But we, we, you know, PMBC doesn't have those. Correct. hundred percent. Understood. So we, I can share those. And then I would also get that from Anthony. I, I'll make sure that Anthony's in the loop on that and, and provides that, um, that okay. Yeah. So without that, I can't do anything with this invoice. No problem. Okay. Just, hang, just, just lift it up and put it back down again. The last the last it's page that we have of this uh, of this invoice packet uh, does show you the amendments of what has been signed to date and where it's been charged to in our budget line items. So, just for my curiosity, who signed who signed these amendments? Anthony. Okay. Yep. So we just need his uh, concurrence. You got it. Yep. So you can see for. Um, for example, for Vertex, that feasibility SD, uh, we, we could we considered it letter S. That was the $30,000 that we were contracted with, I believe, even before the library. Um, and, and so that was part of the overall space needs assessment that we had. Uh, we had an amendment given to us after the library job in order to continue with the senior center. Uh, and we broke that into design development, construction docs, bidding and estimating. And so that's where we stand right now. So I, I can provide all of those for you. So these amendments don't even identify which project they're associated with. They do on, this is only for senior center is what you're seeing here. Okay. Yep. It would be good to have that identified somewhere. Sure. Okay, any other questions for Brian? <clears throat> Okay, so back to the agenda. Um, member input. Exactly, member input. Uh, Bob, anything? I'm all set, thanks. Uh, Bartlett? I'm, I'm okay, thanks. Stacy? I'm good, thank you. I'm good as well. So, um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. So I, I remember that this time, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, Bob? Bob Rama, yes. Bartlett? Bartlett, yes. Uh, Stacy? Uh, Stacy Scott, yes. <clears throat> and Steve, yes. The next meeting will be, hmm, well, that's not right. It'll be sometime in February, second week in February. I'll put the correct date on the minutes. Yeah, the second uh, Wednesday in February. It's the 8th. The 8th? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate your time. Night, all. Thanks. Have a good, Night, have a good all. Evening.